eye movements, their associated brain areas, and links with attention. Although we have the impression that we see this image clearly, in fact, we only see clearly at or near the center of our gaze. So we have to move our eyes from one location to another on this image in order to see the whole picture. For example, the starting gaze position is here, then move to the shoes, then to the face, then to this face, then to the third face, and to this elbow, and to a face in the background. Note that we can only see clearly at or near the center of gaze. And we move our gaze positions about three times a second, and we are typically not aware how frequently we move our eyes. This suggests that many of our gaze shifts are driven by bottom-up or involuntary mechanisms. Here are three different trajectories of gaze positions. Gaze trajectories are very affected by the internal goal of the observer, for example, whether to examine the furniture in a room or to observe relationships between people in this room. There are two kinds of eye movements. One is to saccade like this, to typically uh, shift attention from one object to another or to follow a sudden position jump of an attended object. The other is smooth pursuit, to have gaze follow a slowly moving object. This also helps to keep our gaze to an object when we move our head and body. Eye movements are closely linked with visual attention. Just before making a saccade, discrimination of a very brief object is best at the destination of this saccade. So let's say that the current gaze position is here, and this observer is about to make a saccade to this position to the right. And this observer also knows that just before the saccade, a string of letters or symbols will appear here, and he or she has to recognize the central symbol, the third one from the left. And it's at the same location as the saccadic destination, and these symbols are shown very briefly and then quickly disappear before the saccade onsets. So gaze position is never at any symbol before they disappear. Let's say that the visual inputs are sufficiently clear that this observer can just recognize this central symbol well. Now, if the saccade is aimed at this second symbol instead, then the recognition performance on the central third symbol drops. In visual research, whether visual recognition is good or not, or whether visual performance is fast, is used as a measure of whether attention is effectively directed at the location of the visual object to be recognized. Accordingly, it is possible to keep gaze fixed while directing attention elsewhere. However, it's difficult or impossible to shift gaze to one location without moving attention to the same location at the same time or just before that. Let's look at the brain regions involved in eye movements. This is the eye for the retina, and supraclicalus receives inputs from the retina and visual cortical areas, including V1, and uh, um, other brain centers like LIP and frontal eye field, and the supraculiculus sends saccadic commands to motor regions to control eye muscles for moving the eyes. The frontal eye field can also bypass the supraculiculus to directly command the motor execution region. The upper layers of the supercalliculus have a retinotopic map of the visual field. And the neurons there prefer small visual stimuli, although their recitative fields are larger than those of the V1 neurons. In monkeys, these neurons are insensitive to visual differences in shape, orientation, color, and motion direction. In the deeper layers, 
neurons are active before and during saccades towards uh, visual field regions that are called the movement fields of the neurons. And these movement fields coincide with the visual receptive fields of the corresponding neurons in the upper layers. Some deeper layer neurons also have visual receptive fields, and in such cases, these visual receptive fields coincide with their movement fields. So the two layers correspond roughly to sensory and motor, respectively. Most neurons in areas LIP and FEF have visual receptive fields, and many LIP and FEF neurons respond before or during a saccade towards their movement fields, and movement fields coincide with visual receptive fields for visually responsive neurons. Electrical stimulations of V1, V2, superior colliculus, LIP, and FEF can produce saccadic eye movements towards the receptive field or the movement field of the stimulated neurons. If superior colliculus is lesioned, then stimulations of the visual cortex or LIP no longer evoke saccades. FEF has its own direct command lines to the brainstem for generating eye movements. These command lines are in addition to the pathway by the superior colliculus. Neurons in superior colliculus, LIP and FEF, increase their responses to visual input within their residue fields if this input is the target of an upcoming saccade. If the animal covertly attends to a stimulus without actually making a saccade to it for some reason, then LIP neurons, but not neurons in superior colliculus or FEF, have enhanced responses. The frontal eye field and superior colliculus both have direct access to motor regions involved in executing eye movements, so therefore simultaneously lesioning them both makes a monkey unable to direct eye movements. However, lesioning just one of them does not give rise to long-lasting serious deficits. If one lesion is superior colliculus, the number of spontaneous saccades is reduced, and short latency saccades, called express saccades, are eliminated. Lesioning frontal eye fields makes memory-guided saccades difficult, and makes an animal unable to move its eyes in response to verbal commands. Even when the animal can follow visual objects with saccades and can understand these verbal commands. Lesioning V1 abolishes all visually guided saccades until two months after the lesion. Although the animal can do memory guided saccades, presumably by the frontal eye field. This suggests that the direct retina inputs to superior curriculus is normally not sufficient to drive eye movements in monkeys. Slightly before saccades, neurons in LIP frontal eye field and in the deeper layers of the superior curriculus shift their visual receptive fields such that they respond to visual inputs that are about to be brought into their classical receptive fields by the impending saccades. And this is called receptive field remapping. Presumably, this is to update the representation of visual space that is shifted by the saccades. Some neurons in extrastriate cortex also show some remapping behavior, and the medial dorsal thalamus is involved in this remapping process. Let's say that this is the superior curriculus. And this location in the superior curriculus is electrically stimulated. And let's say that this stimulation evokes a saccade towards lower right in the movement field of the stimulated neuron. If we stimulate another neuron and for another location, and this is the resulting saccade, let's say it's towards upper right. Now, if we stimulate the two neurons together, and this will be the resulting saccade, 
as a combined effect of stimulating the two neurons together. If we remove the second stimulation, but instead make animal pay attention to this spot, for example, by flashing a light at this location, then the saccade evoked by stimulating the first neuron will deviate towards the location where the animal is paying attention to. This means that paying attention to a location is similar to stimulating a corresponding neuron in the superior colliculus. In monkey's LIP, one can identify which neuron is more activated over which other neurons. Then the recitative field location of the more activated neuron is where visual discrimination performance is better. And this is regardless of whether the neural activation is caused by a bottom-up visual input at that location or by a top-down demand for a behavioral task being performed by the monkey. One can also stimulate neurons in the frontal eye field or superior clickers, but the stimulation is below the threshold to evoke eye movements to the movement field of the stimulated neurons, then the animal can do visual tasks better in the movement field, as if attention to the movement field is boosted by such subthreshold stimulations.